So, you want to replace your scooter stator. Maybe your battery keeps going dead, or maybe your scooter doesn't start at all. But how do you get the job done? And do you need special tools? Let's find out. Now today, I'll be demonstrating how to remove and replace a stator using this Genuine Buddy 150. Now as we've talked before, the Genuine Buddy 150 uses a GY6 engine platform. So this procedure will be identical for anyone else working on a GY6 scooter. But this procedure is pretty standard across all manufacturers, so even if you're not working with a Genuine Buddy or a GY6 scooter, this video should still be able to help you out. I also want to point out that I've included timestamps in this video's description. So, if you're looking for specific information or want to skip ahead for any reason, I've made that available to you. Let's take a minute to talk about what your stator is and describe its anatomy. Now, your stator is made up of several insulated wires that have been wrapped into coils called windings. The windings are wound around these poles and the poles are these long pieces that protrude out from the center. When purchasing a new stator, you need to pay attention to how many poles your old stator has. Typically, scooters have 6, 8, and 11 pole stators, and they're not interchangeable. The windings, or coils of wire, generate alternating current when the flywheel magnet passes over them. The faster the magnet moves, the more current they produce. Now your scooter stator has two very important jobs. Not only does it generate the electricity required to keep your scooter's battery charged, but it also generates the initial current required to spark your spark plug. That's one reason why your scooter stator is divided into multiple windings. Typically a stator will have two to three windings dedicated just to charging the battery, and it will have a separate winding dedicated to generating spark. The winding dedicated to generating spark is sometimes referred to as the charge coil. Charge coils have been known to give scooter owners headaches. When the charge coil gets weak, sometimes it cannot generate enough electricity to spark the spark plug when the starter motor is cranking the engine. The result is a scooter that has a really hard time starting, but once it's started, it runs just fine. That's because as the flywheel speeds up, it can generate enough current to spark the spark plug. But when you're just hitting the engine start button, the flywheel isn't generating enough current to overcome the spark plug gap. Now because the windings are separate, they can fail separately. That is to say, you can have a scooter that runs fine but does not charge the battery, or a scooter that's hard to start or won't start but still charges the battery. Keep in mind that because the stator is directly connected to the scooter's battery through the charging circuit, if the stator is shorted, it can cause a parasitic draw on the battery. In short, a bad stator can suck your battery dead. If you want to learn more about parasitic drains or charging system diagnostics, check out my video here. Like it or not, this job is going to require some specialty tools. Now I put require in air quotes because I've seen it done before and done it myself using alternate methods, but I can't in good conscience recommend them. Now I'm gonna assume you have a basic socket set and screwdrivers and skip right into the specialty tools. Now the first specialty tool you're gonna need is an impact gun. Now don't worry, you don't need the old heavy duty pneumatic half inch expensive impact gun of yesteryear because electric impacts have really come a long way recently. They're a lot more powerful than they used to be and they're getting pretty affordable. And what's better than that is once you're done replacing your stator, they're pretty useful around the house. The second specialty tool you're gonna need to do this job is a flywheel puller. Now I know you may be hesitant to buy such a specific single purpose tool, but keep in mind, you don't need to purchase the most expensive one. In fact, I'm gonna be replacing the stator in this video using the cheapest flywheel puller I found on Amazon. I think I paid right around $7 for this thing. 
All right, so now that we have that out of the way, let's get down to the nitty gritty and replace the stator. Now in almost every scooter, the stator is located behind the engine's flywheel on the right hand side of the engine. That means that our first step is going to be to remove this fan shroud. On this particular scooter, the fan shroud is held in place by four fasteners. There are two 8mm bolts and two Phillips head screws. Now the second Phillips head screw is kind of hard to see on this scooter, but there's a little access hole here that you can get your screwdriver through. So let me whip those off real quick. There she is. Okay, with my fasteners removed, now I can pull the fan shroud off the engine case. All right, our next step is gonna to be to remove the fan itself. Now the fan is held in place by four more eight millimeter screws. Now you'll notice when you go to take these fasteners loose, the fan is gonna to wanna to rotate because it's still connected to the scooter's crankshaft and the crankshaft can rotate freely. You can either hold onto the fan with one hand and break it loose, or you can use an impact driver. And there you have it. All right, with the scooter's fan removed, you can see we have clear access to the scooter's flywheel and the pickup coil. What we're gonna to need to do now is remove the flywheel retaining nut. Now this is where your impact driver is really gonna come in handy. You see, if you were to put your regular ratchet and socket on this nut, when you went to loosen it, the whole crankshaft is gonna turn and rotate. Now you could install some kind of apparatus to hold the flywheel still, while you break this nut free. But what's a lot easier than that is just using a standard impact driver. It pulls the nut right off. And you wanna make sure you get that little washer out of there too. Now I like to use the magnet on my pocket screwdriver, but use whatever works for you. Okay, so we've removed the retaining nut. Now how are we gonna pull this flywheel off? Well, that's where our specialty tool is gonna to come in handy. If you look carefully, you can see there are threads cut into this inner diameter of the flywheel. And of course, there are threads cut into our specialty tool. Now you'll notice most of these specialty tools have two different sizes of threads cut into them. There's a larger side and a smaller side. And this is so it can fit more than one scooter application. More often than not, the 139 QMB or 50cc scooters will use this smaller side and the 125 through 150 cc scooters will use this side. Now it is important to note that the larger size for the larger scooters has a left-handed thread pitch, which means to install this tool, you actually turn it counterclockwise into the hole. We'll carefully install this into our flywheel, making sure that we don't cross thread it. Now it should go in nice and easy all the way down. Now we're ready to install the push bar. Now the push bar has standard right-handed threads. So it goes in just like any other fastener. Now the tool I'm using today has a 17 millimeter hex on the push bar, which takes a regular 17 millimeter socket. And the tool body itself has two machined flats. And that perfectly accepts a 24 millimeter wrench. So what I'm going to do is hold on to my 24 millimeter wrench to stabilize the tool body and I'm going to drive the push bar into the tool using my socket wrench. Now when I say into the tool, we're going to tighten it righty tighty. Now you feel the tool gets pretty stiff. Now a mistake I see a lot of people make now is when the tool starts to bind up like this, they'll push it through. Now when you do that, you risk damaging the threads on the flywheel and the threads in your tool. So, here's a trick a technician taught me a long, long time ago that makes this whole thing quite a bit easier. Now the trick goes a little something like this. 
Once the tool is as tight as you can go and you fear you're going to strip it out, take your ratchet off, install a 17 millimeter socket on the push bar, and we're going to give it a quick sharp blow with a hammer. Okay? Now the hammer blow is just going to shock the components enough to where they might release. The reason I've put this socket back on the push bar is to make sure if I glance off this with my hammer, I don't deform the tool to a point where I can't use it again. And I'm using a socket, I don't really mind getting a little banged up. So, one quick strike with the hammer, and usually that's loosened it just a little bit. So we'll go back in with the ratchet. Oh, see that? I got a little bit more turn out of it. So, take the ratchet off. I'll give her another strike. Oh, I definitely heard something happen that time. Put my ratchet back on. Got a little more. Oh, there she goes. And she let go. So, now the flywheel is free. I can literally just pull it right off the crankshaft. The tool kind of makes a neat handle for it, too. All right, so here's what we were after, the scooter's stator. Now, I always like to take this opportunity to match up the part that I ordered against the part that's already on the scooter. You'll note I have a six-pole stator here. The part I have is a six-pole stator. Looks like the pickup coil is the same. It has the engine case gasket, just like my other piece. This is going to be a great replacement part. Okay, so our first step is going to be to remove the pickup coil. You'll see the pickup coil also has this little metal bracket in the bottom, and that bracket's job is to keep the wiring away from the rotating flywheel. Now we can remove the two bolts that hold the stator in place. Now, when you're working on your scooter stator, you really need to keep track of this key. Some people call this a woodruff key. Now, this little piece of metal is in charge of keeping the flywheel in perfect alignment with the crankshaft. And it's only pressed into this little slot. Sometimes it'll come off with your flywheel, and I even see it be sheared off into the flywheel. So, this one's in good shape. It's right in the spot it should be. I'm just going to make sure it doesn't get pushed out of alignment or fall out of its slot. All right, so before I remove the old stator completely, I like to start installing my new stator. Doing it this way makes sure I can reroute the wire harness in the exact same way the factory installed it. I'll align my stator onto the engine case, line up my bolt holes, and I'm just going to install these bolts a few turns. I'm not tightening them down all the way. And the reason I'm not is because I want a little bit of movement out of the stator still. You see, if I had improperly routed my wiring, I don't want to clamp the wires between the engine case and the stator and risk shearing or pinching them. Now I'll route my wire harness up into the engine case. This little grommet actually does a great job of holding your wires up and out of the way. And we'll get the pickup coil ready to reinstall. And when you're doing this routing, you want to make sure that no wires are getting pulled or pinched or making really sharp angles. Once again, I'm going to start off by running these screws in by hand only a couple turns. So I can do the wiggle check Make sure that everything is routed just as it should be, nice and safe. So, this is all looking pretty good, so I'm ready to send it home. So you'll notice I'm using my quarter inch ratchet to install these bolts instead of my impact driver. Now the reason I'm doing that is it's very easy with an impact driver to strip out the internal threads cast into this engine case. And the last thing you want to do is ruin your customer's engine case. So. An ounce of precaution. Tighten those down to one oofta. All 
All right, and that's it. Now this is your last chance to inspect your Woodruff key and make sure it's installed correctly. This one looks good. And you'll notice there's a slot in the flywheel that that key indexes on. So, slide the flywheel on. And don't be alarmed, it is magnetic. It's gonna wanna slide right into place. There we go. Next, we'll install our washer and the retaining nut. Now, while I'm sure there is a factory torque spec that this should be torqued to, the flywheel rotation actually tightens this nut and holds it captive. So it's not as important to get this down to the factory torque spec. I like to zing it down to about three or four Ugga Duggas. Nicely. All right, all there is left to do now is chase the new wiring in after the old wiring. Now this goes up under the seat bucket, so I'm gonna remove the seat bucket real quick first and complete the job. All right, here we are up under the seat bucket, and here is the wiring we're after. Now you'll notice the stator wiring is all kept together in this loom, which makes it pretty easy to find. So, we have a three pin connector. I'll we'll disconnect that first. Then we have two singular connectors here. Now you wanna be careful when separating these because these wires have been known to come out of their little bullet connector. So I'm gonna get some needle nose pliers. Okay, finally she let free there. I was getting nervous for a second. There it is. All right, you'll notice that there is a blue wire with yellow tracer, and there's a black wire with a red tracer. We wanna make sure that we reinstall these wires to their corresponding wires on the harness. So let me snake the old harness out. Old stator is out and snake the new harness in the exact same way. We'll connect our three pin connector first. Followed by the blue wire with yellow tracer. And our black wire with red tracer. Make sure they press in all the way together. You don't want one of these popping off as you're going down the road. All right. Tuck that back in the harness clips and we're ready to put the seat bucket back on. All right, now that we have our wiring installed, we're gonna reinstall our cooling fan and our cooling fan shroud. Now installation is gonna be exactly the opposite of the way we removed it. I always like to start my bolts by hand to make sure I don't cross thread them. And it's also a good idea to get all your bolts started before you tighten any of them down. That way you can make sure everything is lined up. You don't have to take it all the way back off because that last bolt won't line up. Now you're also gonna have to use your best judgment on how tight to tighten these bolts. If you over tighten them, you risk cracking the fan. If you under tighten them, <laughs> you risk the fan coming off. Now they do have a little bit of Loctite on them, so they shouldn't shake loose, but make sure they're pretty snug. Last, we're gonna go back on with the fan shroud. Now, what's really interesting about the fan shroud is without this intact and without this in place, that cooling fan does next to nothing. It's what's called a squirrel cage fan and it's meant to draw air in through this direction and the centrifugal force forces the air outward out of the fan. 
Now, if the fan shroud is not in place, that air is just gonna go all out and it's not gonna cool the motor at all. With the shroud in place, it directs all the air right over the cylinder head and the cylinder, keeping it cool. So, <laughs> make sure you put this back on right. And last, this tricky one behind the hole. I'm gonna use some pliers to hold it in place while I put my screwdriver to it. And there she is. All right, so now that I've shown you the correct way to remove and install this flywheel using the specialty flywheel puller, I'd like to show you some alternate ways to remove this flywheel. Now, I don't really recommend using these methods because they can oftentimes damage the engine case or damage the flywheel or the stator. Um, really, your best bet is using the tool. However, I understand there are situations where we don't always have the correct tool in mind and we have to kind of improvise and use what we have around. So, the first method I'm gonna show you is using a puller like this. Now this is a three jaw puller used to pull steering wheels or harmonic balancers. It's an automotive tool. Now the three jaw puller works pretty great. This one I really like because the fingers are indexable. But basically it's going to work on the same principle as our flywheel puller. The fingers are going to reach behind the flywheel and this push bar is going to push against the crankshaft pulling the flywheel out of its position. And I'll show you how that gets set up. Can be a little tricky to maneuver. And if you're using this method, you wanna make extra sure you're only grabbing just on the edge of the flywheel. You don't wanna be grabbing on the stator or anything behind it. And also keep in mind, if you're not pulling straight off, you do risk damaging the flywheel by flexing it and warping it out of shape. But I think that one's ready to go. Put my socket on it and give her a pull. Boom, came right off. A little scary, it comes off kind of violently and a little less controlled than the flywheel puller. Now let's say you don't have one of these fancy, expensive three jaw pullers at your disposal, but maybe you or your neighbor or your father-in-law has access to one of these hardware store pullers. Now um, the principle is the same, and you can use these feet to slip in behind the flywheel, but there's actually another way to use this. First, I'm gonna reinstall the flywheel. Now, instead of installing this with the puller jaws behind the flywheel, like that, you can actually utilize the threaded holes for your cooling fan. Now the bolts that are used to secure the cooling fan to the flywheel are six millimeter with a 1.0 thread pitch. So you can find yourself a six on 1.0 bolt that's extra long. Now I've got this one with a couple extra washers to make sure they don't pass directly through my puller. And we're gonna bolt the puller directly to the flywheel using those cooling fan bolt holes. We'll just get a couple threads in there and make sure the tool is even. If it's a little off to one side, your puller is going to go cattywampus and cause you all kinds of pain. That looks about good. So we'll tighten it down. Go nice and easy, nice and slow. We don't want to damage our threads. We'll give it the old taparoo. Pull it a little more. And there you have it, method number 1.5. Now for the final unrecommended way to pull this flywheel off. Now, for the sake of this demonstration, I've reinstalled the old bad stator because if you do it this way, you are going to destroy the stator. So I would save this for a last ditch effort in which you need to pull this flywheel off, 
you can't wait for the puller, you know the stator behind the flywheel is bad, so it doesn't matter if you destroy it, you have a new one on hand. It has to be all those scenarios. But here's how you can do it. You'll notice these are not blind holes, which means you can see all the way through the holes in the flywheel. So what you can do is line the holes up with the poles of the stator. Okay, now that I've got that out of the way, I'm going to take the retaining nut off. Still need an impact driver. Don't bother with a flywheel holder and a socket, just get yourself an impact driver. What we're going to do is we're going to install our 6mm on 1.0 bolts back into the flywheel. And we're actually going to run them all the way through. So what's going to happen is they're going to run into the stator and start pushing off the stator, pushing the flywheel out. Now, again, I don't recommend doing this. This is not a good way to do it. It's not the correct way. But it is a way if you're stuck in a jam. So, without further ado. So I'm running the bolt down. Okay, I just felt the bottom out against the stator. Now I'm going to run a bolt down on the other side. Now it's important to do it evenly. You don't want to just do it on one side because you're going to pull the flywheel out one direction and it's going to jam on the crankshaft. So, tighten it down the other side. Okay, just bottomed out. So I'm going to do a quarter turn. Oof, I heard it breaking. And a quarter turn. And a quarter turn. And a quarter turn. Another quarter turn. And a quarter turn. And a quarter turn. Okay, now that I feel that it's tight and it's kind of binding up, I'm going to give it a whack with my hammer. Before I whack it though, I'm going to reinstall this bolt. Not all the way, but just enough to protect the threads. Once again, if I have a glancing blow with my hammer, I don't want to deform the threads to a point where I can't get the retaining nut back on. Also, if you hit it too hard, you risk mushrooming out the end of the crankshaft, and then you'll never get the bolt back on. So, I'm going to give it a whack. I'm going to snug it up a little more. Give her another whack. There it is. Now you can definitely see where the screws were pushing against the stator. This stator is now destroyed because all of these windings are shorted together. That's why I was saying this is only a last resort and if you don't intend on ever using this stator again. Well, I hope you got a charge out of this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If it helped you out, or if you have an idea for a future episode of Scooter 911, please leave a comment below. You know, I make these videos to empower people to take repairs into their own hands and to remind everyone that a scooter is just a bucket of bolts, and the people who work on them aren't smarter than you. So until next time, keep it shiny side up. The nitty gritty. Okay, and wait, monitor display off. Midios. Midios? <laughs> okay. Ah, ah, 0.0 thread pitch. Charge, 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 charge out of this video.